I have something to bring to you to talk to you about today. And <laughs> I did a little bit of work on this one. And it turned out to be very, I would say, fascinating because I've even learned some things myself. And uh, one of the things that I've learned is there is a handful of people around you who um, in their mind it's it's difficult it's difficult to face reality because they love to be comfortable in their in their own deception what what I mean is they deceive themselves I made an audio on that as well if you want some reference I made an audio called we deceive ourselves okay so if you want more detail of that check that out but a lot of times we deceive ourselves in the programming that's been given to us as children. Basically because there's family involved, because there are friends in the uh, church sectors or what some people say religion. Okay. But a lot of the times is it's based on that individual who don't want to see outside of themselves. And in order for you to see outside of yourself, that means you have to make a change. You got to make a difference. You have to, you have to be able to tune yourself. You're going to be able to, you're going to have to deal with your flaws and understand your perfections. And there are so many people who just don't want to do that. And you will find yourself wasting your time, your time in a conversation with them where whether it may be religious, whether it may have something to do with health, whether it might have something to do with either lifestyle or the choices that people make. A lot of, if not everything that the common individual will do, as I discussed before, is generally going to be based on religion. And the reason why religion's at play, and for some people who aren't about religion, they are about spirituality, you know, they have a broader and a wise, wider mind in a larger reach in existence those who go by just a religious mindset and what religious mean i pretty much broke that down on one of my audios to tell you that there's a difference between spirituality and religion those are two different worlds altogether whereas spirituality is based on a deeper interconnection between yourself and the universe that has nothing to do with being taught by the book it has nothing to do with being taught by any sort of system that is around you. It's not about being indoctrinated by a pastor, preacher, or what somebody else says. It's your own personal, it's your own personal adjustment to existence. And thus it becomes spiritual as well based on how it affects you internally. Okay, whereas religion is something that affects only your mind. It is a programming that is within the book contents within somebody needing to tell you what it is within somebody needing to give you the road or the path in which they uh, program you to walk okay so i'm going to ask you several questions and uh when i'm asking questions i'm actually going to bring it to you as in a discussion as this discussion that we're having and with that will be the question itself which will indeed be answered and one of the big questions are um, some of you already know this but I have to bridge it like this because you are in the Academy of Wow Men and you are listening to Leon C aka Morpheus okay I don't have to tell you what I do I don't have to tell you what my status is I don't have to tell you what my goal is because I've spoken to you about that already you should have already been in those classes by now but I'm gonna read this thing to you and uh, with that will be your questions and your answers actually mingled into one. Then I'll begin to give you the kickers of this thing. I was given a, uh, I was actually given this, uh, <laughs> this classroom studies by a, uh, by a brother of mine. And I told you, I got a lot of eyes and ears everywhere and uh, they contact me and give me um, they give me information. They tell me about what's going on and they give me an experience. They tell me about who they speak to or if it, if it's a interview or something like that, you know, they'll, they'll sit there and interview with the individual or person 
or they will get the information themselves from their own personal experiences and they will share it with me. Okay. So one of my uh, confidant friends, brothers that I call them, began to tell me about a conversation that he had with a, <laughs> with a, uh, with a person, I'm going to say. And this person did the three things that I've told you about in my other audio when it comes to cognitive distance, when it comes to trying to uh, defend their faith, put it like that. When it comes to when you are debating about facts and reality and when you bring truth to the average common religious person, whenever it is accurate and it is actually to the core where you can research it, you can go to the place, you can go to Egypt, you can go to Jerusalem, you can go wherever you want to go to find out your evidence. They are not going to do it. You can give them online links. You can tell them who is actually uh, better at going through the Bible or the books in order to um, bring out the contradictions in the books or the Bibles or whatever else it may be. OK, and they simply will not do it because they are afraid of reality. They are afraid of finding out that what they think they believe in and what they hope in is wrong. My friend also told me this. He uh, told me that he had explained to this person about his past experience with religion. And he said, well, I was in it before and I did a lot of praying and things didn't happen for me. And I had to figure it out through science and reality. And I wasn't sincere about it. And what this person said to him made me laugh. And we both sat down over coffee and joked and laughed about this individual. They said this. They said the reason why God did not answer your prayer is because you did not believe and you didn't have faith. And they jumped on that particular subject and they thought that they won the debate. They thought that was the end all be all. And uh, my partner came back at her with an even more accurate sharpened blade that she couldn't dodge or parry. And of course, yeah, I said she <laughs> spilled the beans on that one where she couldn't come back with any logical, any sensible, any type of any type of right search, research or historical evidence that can be seen today. And of course, not without it actually being made up or um, uh, fixed in some type of what do you call that um, uh, uh, workshop in some type of workshop or in some type of uh, library with their stories uh, twisted. OK. And so he said this in return, he said this, he said, well, you're right. And of course, she was jumping up with joy, thinking that she run the debate. He said, it's not that I don't believe and not that I don't have faith. You're right about that, because those are irrelevant to the matter. He says the reason is, is because I know that it doesn't exist. I know that it's not proper for me. I know that what I was praying to wasn't listening. I know that the indoctrination wasn't right. You hear that? Did you hear what I just said? It wasn't a matter of faith or belief. Those are two distinct words. Those words are deceptive. Those words is what get people in trouble. Those are the words that make you go stupid and dumb. Because when you go by faith, when you go by belief, you don't go by you know. And I have to teach you this on the often, and it's in my audios. If you are a senior in my class, I don't have to tell you this, but those who are new to this classroom, I don't, I should not need to elaborate on this because you need to go back to the older audios to see or to check it out. Okay. And of course, you're probably wondering why is religion such an important topic when I can be speaking about other things? Oh, I will. Definitely I will. And I do in my other audios, but religion is usually, again, what people take into their viscera, their life. It's serious to most people because it's based on life and death. When you deal with your relationships, your marriage, even your job, sometimes even your finances and the things that you do at home, 
even whether you know it or not, unconsciously, when you are a religious person or a spiritual person, or you just a regular old Joe with no direction, it's going to affect your life. It's going to it, it's going to affect your marriage. It's going to it, it's going to affect how you raise your kids. It's going to affect how you uh, how you vote. It's going to affect who you respect and who you don't respect. So it is important. It is a foundation and it is relevant to the mind for it is an apparatus of many other things. If you don't comprehend that, you got a problem. So therefore, talking about it is only talking about another pillar that can either be broken or can be fixed and will at the end should make you a better person if you are willing to learn something different and jump out of your comfort zone in which a lot of people are in. But to get past that story, he began to preach, well, not preach, but to talk to her about the story of Noah. Noah is a very unique story in the biblical text because um, most people have did their dimensions of the boat. Most people understand that uh, he didn't have any testing tools at the time. A lot of people uh, who are wise and adults realize that before you put something out there on the road or the sea, you're going to have to test it first. You got to get the dimensions right. You got to know what you're doing. You got to be able to put the clay together and see how long the clay is going to last over the water. And your mind have to be adjustable. Your mind and your your. Uh, your abilities, the tools that you have, the people that you're working with have to have a king vision. They have to be greatly talented. They have to be, what do you call that, a, uh, a master carpenter in their abilities. Okay, and you have to have done that for a long time. But as you know, many of projects that we make even today in the current world in the 2020s, they have a tendency to fail. They have a tendency to break down. There's failures in it. There's been many of recalls from manufacturers two types of manufacturers one they made those cars like that on purpose so you can bring their trash back to their dealership so they can make money off of you that's one of them and two is because they they got too lazy in the quality and control room and just wanted to make a dollar off of you so they decided to make products that were already inferior and they knew that it was cheap projects or products okay and of course i uh, well, I, got, I might as well say this. It's three. Yes, there's three. Okay. Three is the particular fact that things just fail because they're made by who? They're not made by a superior being. They're not made by a God. They're made by man, human. And humans have a habit of failing. And oftentimes when they fail, they have to turn back around and uh, fix their failures. That's just a matter of reality. Okay, so if you're thinking about such a superior individual such as Noah and his little bitty family being able to create and make this ark that's bigger than anything that, well, it claims to be very huge and big and impressive, okay, without anybody creating anything on that scale during that time and not have ever tested it. And uh, here comes a flood or here comes a situation where he needs this boat and all of a sudden it's going to float. All of a sudden, it's going to work for how many days? I could be wrong. Maybe, what was that, 40 days, 40 nights or something like that? I don't know. Okay, it was somewhere around that number. Okay, I can imagine it maybe, uh, uh, what do you call that, lasting for maybe a day, a day and a half or something like that, or less. Okay, even if you just throw it together and you try to figure out how to put this boat together, it may float for a little while, whatever you use to clay it together. Okay, or to put it together, but to last as long as they try to say that it lasts, you know, that's very laughable by people who are considered as uh, engineers today, people who are considered as home builders, you know, people who are considered as um, they're in the architects. You know, they would tell you themselves that, you know, yeah, it may last for a little while, but for if you want it to last longer than that, you're going to have to engineer it quite better than that. OK, it's going to have to be better. And here's the joke about it. A lot of people will say this, that it was inspired by God. That's the argument. Usually, usually that's the comeback. That's the majority. Seventy nine percent of them will say that You say Morpheus. It was inspired by God. He was touched by God. He was gifted by God. You know, that's that's the joke behind it. You know, that's the joke. You know, that's that's their only comeback. You know, he, yeah, he was inspired. God powered him up. And gave him the inspiration to make this art. Okay. <laughs> That's it. But let's go further than that. 
because I'm going to read something to you, and uh, it's by, uh, let's see, who's the writer here? Bible Studies. It's by Bible Studies Tools, and I'm going to read it because there's no Bible in front of me, and I told you how I feel about the Bible. You know, if I'm not resting my legs on it or using it for a stool, you know, I don't need it. Okay, but check this out. The story of Noah's Ark is one filled with, here we go, faith, perseverance, and promise. Noah was a man who found great favor in God's eyes. The entire population, oh, here we go, listen, the entire population of mankind had become evil. Stop right there. Think about it for a second. Wait a minute. The entire population of mankind had become evil. <laughs> wait, first of all, who made, wait, 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 who made them to begin with? Who, who made them? Wait a minute. Did, did they make themselves? And then somewhere, I think there's another passage of the Bible, and, and I don't have it in front of me. I think there's another passage that talks about uh, somewhere that God grieved and regretted ever making man. So, wait a minute. I'm going to read the rest of this, but I'm going to jump on this for a moment. So, you mean to tell me that you make a thing, and you are grieving that you've made this thing, but... Uh, uh, the your Bible, the same text that you read this nonsense from this the, this this flange of a nasty well, I ain't even go to this this flange of a nasty way of using your logic or a retarded way of using your logic tells you that uh, uh, well God never fails um, <laughs> you know God God's not one to what do you call that um, to uh, What's that to forbid or forbade its words or something like that? I'm using the wrong word here. I know I am. Um, forsake. That's the word to forsake its own words, to forsake itself, you know, to forsake its own words, you know, that, that God never repents. Right. This sort of thing. And they have it in a passage. OK, it's in your Bible, but it's in a different word. But it is it means the same thing. But you you get this idea that this person is perfect. Why would this this thing be perfect and create something that's imperfect and get mad at the thing that's imperfect when it should get mad at itself? But you got to remember, hold on, slow your roll and shut up and listen, because remember, these are people that we're talking about. You may do that with your project. You may do that if you make a car. But, well, yeah, I messed up and you scrap it and you make another one. Right. You you probably might be able to do that with a piece of paper or even a uh, what a, what's that a painting. You might be able to do this even with some potter. Some people say, you know, God was a potter. You know, <laughs> it's not, it's just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, that's that's how I laugh. I mean, some of you probably, like, you know, what is he doing in the background? That's how I laugh. I can't. I have to stifle it like that, so it comes off. It just comes out as gaps of air and and uh, you know that I'm you know smoking or something like that. I'm not. You know, I'm I'm actually laughing. It's just it's hard for me to speak on things that just don't make. It's nonsense. You know, it goes beyond logic that we don't even comply to ourselves. How? OK, so you you make something, you cut grass or something. You don't you don't cut it right. The lines are all over the place. There's still patches of uh, weed in several places. You'll get mad at the grass for growing. Are you going to get mad at the grass for growing? You know, it's what you would do is go out there and recut it again. Or you will redo your hair. Whatever that you do, you're going to redo it again. You're not going to get mad at the project. You'll get mad at yourself. Listen, why would you say that what you created is evil when uh, you are supposed to be of good? Wait a minute. Uh oh, slow down. Somebody need to pump the brakes on this train because you're going too far. Why would you create something and it has the potential to do evil? And then you're mad at it and want to destroy it. But here we go again. I know what some of you are thinking. I'm not going to get into the good and evil thing. I'm going to leave that for you to decide on your own. These are people that we're talking about. We're not talking about a car. We're not talking about grass. We're not talking about a piece of paper or artwork or, or a poster. We are talking about living beings. We're talking about people like you and I. And now we're discussing. We're saying something like, well... We, here we go. Here's another cognitive dissidence. This is their third gear. This is when they come out and say, well, you know, God gave free will. 
here we go. Here's another donkey again coming in the room, and that's what they're programmed to say. Automatically know what they're going to say. That's what they, that's the second thing. That's what they're going to say. God gave free will, and they're going to do whatever they want to do with their free will. Oh, okay. All right. Well, um, and also, you want to go back to that. You got your ministers and your pastors and you and other people saying that God never changed. So you never change, never changes from past, present to future. Right. So let's talk about the flood again. All right. I want you all to keep that in your mind. Keep, hold that for hold that thought for a moment for a second. Right. So God never changes. So that means that flood. You heard I said Noah was a man found great favor. Of Noah's ark filled faith, perseverance and purpose promise i'm gonna keep reading hold that thought god never changes okay get it got it done let's keep reading the entire population of mankind have become evil and wicked now it's one thing to say evil hold on hold on it's one thing to call somebody evil but it's another thing altogether when you say wicked because now you talk listen you if you are the author and the creator of something you create a book that's a nasty, evil book. You are the creator of that book. Why would you call the book evil when you are the one who created it yourself? So that means you are the wicked one, not the book. You're the wicked one. You're the evil one. Okay, it's one thing to say that people are evil. Okay, now you they, go, they went deeper than that. They said wicked. Now you really go on above and beyond. And they're making it, listen... The book here in your biblical text, I'm talking about Noah, they're trying to make it absolutely certain and sure that you know that these people weren't worth living. They that they needed to be wiped off the face of the planet. But yet they didn't they did not convey to you the fact that who created those people to begin with and at the same time that they were people at the end of the day. And three, who created those people? Who was the one behind it all in those particular uh, adjusted days of creation? Right. All they want you to do is look at the book and say, oh, these people were wicked and evil, but yet they're human beings just like you. What? They're not humans. What was it? Aliens roaming the world, the earth or something like that. What were they? Just barbarians and mindless. They were still people living, breathing people. But they want you to be comfortable with the fact of what what God is getting ready to do. They setting you up for ignorant stupidity so you can be comfortable with God's unnecessary wrath, with God's unnecessary um, overbearing and useless tactics to destroy something that it created itself when it should be ashamed of itself, not its creation. That's uncomfortable for some of you who don't read books. I know this is uncomfortable for you who, you, who are programmed. and Some of you who just think about what your pastor and your grandma and you probably might be a minister yourself. He's like, more for you, you are just out of place. Now, nah, this is, yeah, it's uncomfortable for you because you're that very person who don't look at people as human beings. You look at person as objectifiable. You look at people as expendable. As long as they, as, if they don't apply to your indoctrination in your mindless programming of this God, Satan, and gesture thing, you want to banish them into hell. That's the way that you think. So you're comfortable with it. You're comfortable with labeling a, a human being as a beast. Well, they are humans just like you, and they make failures just like you. So how in the world can anybody around them, are their culture, their, 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 uh, their uh, origin being human being be considered as uh, a superior being are wrong when they didn't make themselves. They didn't make their reality. They was brought into reality. They was brought into existence just like you, me, and any innocent two-year-old child. There is still, and, and the bad thing about it is these come from people who believe in God. This, this nonsense that this type of cognitive dissidents come from people who say that they love and they love Jesus, that Jesus loves me. Jesus love me. Yes, I know. So the Bible tells me. Tho, 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 tho. These are the people who will sing that nonsense and then turn around and say, because they say you're evil and you wicked. You deserve not to be here or not to exist. Because what sins, what crazy behavior, what bad behavior that they did in the past that was different than what we do today. But we do worse than what they used to do. And we have all the excuses not to do worse because we got so much. We got technology. We got information. You know, we got some people who got their head on their shoulders and we still do worse than what those people did. We still fornicate today. Yes, we do. We still worship false idols today. Yes, we do. 
We worship money. We worship our jobs. We worship, you know, useless women. We worship all kinds of things that are irrelevant to existence. So what makes us any different than them? But now because the Bible tells you that this person is evil and wicked, you're like, oh, it's OK that God will wipe the earth. It's an excuse to flood everybody and kill them. <laughs> but let's go further. Let me get off of that. Let me let's go further. Right. It says God decided to bring a flood. Listen to the earth to destroy everyone. Everyone, everyone. He didn't say, I'm not reading, this is not my words here. Morpheus isn't reading from something that he written. You know, I'd feel like a dumb first grader if I were to write something like this. I got to be dumb, deaf, and retarded to do something like this. This is from somebody, this is from uh, Bible studies tools, not me. Okay, I didn't say this. Everyone flood the earth to destroy everyone but Noah and his family. That's it. Noah and this. Hold on. Slow down. Slow down. Because I know you feel in your gut right now. Slow down. Don't get angry at Morpheus. Everyone but Noah and his family. Stop right there. Okay. Now let's get back to what I told you to remember. Remember what I said about God being then, today, and tomorrow? Okay, and I know some of you are thinking, well, there are some floods in the world going on. There is some, so, you know, there was some hur hurricanes and, you know, there were some, you know, bad, you know, things happening. The earth was shaking and, you know, the seasons were being tops and turvy. Well, you don't know science. That's your problem. You don't know science. And I, listen, I don't mind losing a couple of dollars and I'm not making a promise right here. But, you know, I would pay you to go read my book. 2020 America Rise of Far Heart because I talk about that in the book. You need to read it. Okay, this is for your lesson. Okay, you need to understand something because you are programmed to think as they want you to think that this is an invincible God war between the heavens and the earth. When it's it's nothing but the activity of your kind, which is which is human. What you read is human. What you are studying is human. What you are dumbed down to is human comprehension, not some superior being called God. It is a makeup and a mock up of something that one don't exist and two only exist in the perception and the vision of mankind and how he is able to receive such information that is above and beyond him. Do you get that? <laughs> so you need to read that book. Okay, so you can understand things a little differently. It has nothing to do with, oh, it's the end of the world. This must be truly revelations. You know, the reason why God's flooding certain towns and countries is because men and women are sinning. You know what? Sit, just, you, sit down on your rusted, crusty boxers and hush. Tip your lips. Tie it down if you have to. <laughs> Now, as the world was flooded in completion, here is the very factor of logic that you can't get around. That means only Noah, 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 Noah itself and his family, the few that was in the ark as everything was flooded, is your mommy and your daddy. Shut your mouth and argue with somebody else. I wish you would put something stupid down there in the comment box, but how could you? And I'm reading something from your own words that you put your life and you, you put your life and your expectation on. It tells you right here. God decided to flood the earth to destroy everyone. Do you know what everyone mean? Do I have to write that down on the chalkboard for you? You know what everyone mean? Huh, son? Huh, Sally? You know what everyone means? That means everyone. <laughs> Do you know what everyone means? That means not a soul existed. That means nobody else was around you. That means at that time, listen, it was just Noah and his family. And you should be wondering to yourself, who the hell is the narrator? Shut your mouth and think about it for a second. Who the hell is the narrator? Who's talking about who is standing and floating outside of the who's floating outside of the Noah's Ark? OK, like a movie, like what you do in a movie. You are the uh, you're the you the cameraman. Right. And the main characters is just Noah and his family. 
So who's these narrators on the outside who's floating with this large camera, you know, over this this uh, large obnoxious arc? <laughs> OK, just just check for check that out for a moment. Check it out. Check it out. Use your logic and check it out. Who's floating around this? Who's telling you the story here? If it's just Noah and his family, did Noah tell the family the story himself? Amazing. On one of his family members, <laughs> like, it will be more like me and Noah. It will be more like, uh, you know, here I am as Noah, and this is what happened in, in my lifetime. You would you would you really write something to talk about yourself in third person if you're talking about a diary or you're writing something down based on your experience today? I woke up in the morning and uh, it was raining. You're going to say today, you know, Jonathan woke up in the morning and uh, it was raining and Jonathan felt revived. You're going to be like, no, I am Jonathan. Right. <laughs> I'm trying. Listen, I'm really trying to make it as basic as possible and I can't make it no more simple. This is like first grade. I feel like a kindergartner having this type of conversation right now. I really do. But it gets worse. Here comes the kicker. And this is what you should really lavish upon. So everyone's gone and nobody's here but our ultimate master father who is Noah and his family. Noah and his family and uh, Noah and his, uh, uh, I think they say his sons had wives or something like that. However it goes, it's his family. No matter how you look at it, somebody had to procreate with somebody and it's called incest. <clears throat> okay. And uh, if Noah's family was just producing human beings and nobody else was producing human beings, wouldn't that make us all one family? Wait a minute. Slow down. Because I know some of you, oh, you know, we are you know, Jacob and Abraham. You know, uh -huh. I hear the songs all the time. I hear it all the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. So let me say three things that this uh, person did when my partner was having a conversation. This was brought to their attention. And this is what they did. This is your Christian person right here. <laughs> this is your Christian. Don't, don't get mad at Morpheus. I'm going to tell you what they say. Okay. I'm going to tell you what they say, not me. All right. The three steps. The three steps is when you talk to somebody about logic and straightforward facts that you can figure out for yourself. First of all, he brought it to her attention and said, he said, the world was flooded. God flooded the world duh. the world as if she didn't know what the world means you know not surprising coming from her anyway but like she didn't know what it meant and everyone was everyone passed away you know that didn't ring a bell in her mind you know it's amazing how much of a how much how many kids that we have in the form of uh looking like they're adults okay and uh so that didn't register so the argument went to her second cognitive dissident that like they always do well that's not what the bible meant um uh 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 what it meant was that um no the it said that god flooded the land I'm like <laughs> god, like somebody please please pass me a cigar on this one this is just out outrageous outrageous that she would say something like this the land you know god flooded the land Oh, and, and of, here we go. Now, that didn't work because he destroyed her on that one. He debunked her on that one. Okay, and corrected her about the scripture itself. And yes, you have different interpretations. You do have different sets of Bibles. You do have different translations. And some of them would say world. Some of them would say land. Some of them would say earth. And they'll leave it like that. But it's the same thing. God flooded the world and destroyed mankind. Destroyed everyone and left Noah alone simple as that that's your problem when you see when you go by somebody else's words and perception you're going to be deceived if somebody else tried to write my book 2020 america rise of far hard i would know if it's mine or not i got the transcripts i got the bare papers in which i started writing down first before i started typing it and i got the manuscripts you know and i got the i got all my what do you call that I got the publishing rights as well that has also got transcripts, also got proof as well. So therefore, if somebody try to mismatch it around, I know it's wrong. 
But y'all will put your life, your entire soul and everything on somebody else's words, somebody else's perception of existence. That's why they can give you five or six different translations because you didn't write it. So you're going to be twisted and mind blocked five or six different ways and your instincts is going to be distorted five or six different ways. I got something for you at the end of this. And this is for. uh, I got something at the end of this that I need to add before I let go of it. And so that didn't work. She was destroyed on that one. So here comes, listen, here comes the third cognitive dissidence. Instead of facing the fact that the world was destroyed, everyone was practically killed by their loving God who decided to sacrifice his son so everybody can believe in him. Okay, which is really, you. <laughs> um, let me stop. Let me, I, let me stop. Okay, because sometimes I can really get, I can really get out of control. I can really get out of control because you you just don't see what I see. You don't know it. You just can't. Sometimes when you are living in a space bubble your entire life and you are willing to sit there and live based on what everybody tells you, you're walking around like a zombie. You're mindless. You're mindless. Here's the third thing she said. Um, well, maybe other people was there. Like, but, <laughs> The reason why she said this is because at this point, that's when uh, that's when my partner told her, said, listen, uh, that means we are all Noah's children. We are all Noah. That means we are we are children of Noah. That means we are all incest. That means everybody around here is brother and sister. We all got the same genetics. Right. That means, uh, you know, hell, you know, we might as well all have the last name, uh, uh, last name. OK, we just, you know, the Buccaneers or whatever we want to be. What the hell, you know, just human, you know, we can use that as a last name. Forget it. You know, we all just, you know, have the same everything, you know, and have this one father, master father called Noah, if that's the case. OK, so that pretty much destroyed her. She couldn't say anything, just sitting there really looking stupid face looking on the floor. But here you go. Then that's when she said, well, you know, maybe other people was there. And I'm like, OK, all right. <laughs> OK, so he said, check this out. And this is what he said in this, in his, uh, his writing. Okay. See if I can get this right. Other people. <laughs> Hold on here. Let me get, I'm getting things together. Okay. I got it. As a, let's check, check this out. <laughs> so if, uh, something happens, like, uh, let's see how he put it together. Here's what he said. If um, if there was a murder in a house, OK, and there was uh, 150 people there and uh, I'm I'm the investigator, I come in there and I need to figure out, you know, how it happened, how many people was here and what's going on in this house. You know what happened during that night? Who was parked outside? Uh, who was there previously? Who was the last person to leave? You know, I need to know everything. I need to know everything from top to bottom. I need to comb the place. Okay, in order for me to get the right information, right? So, check this out. You put your life and your soul on it because in some cases, it's that serious. If somebody is murdered in a home or a house, okay, it's a serious situation. At least we should take that seriously. So, of course, you're going to be like, well, I need to know everything. I need the full information. I need to know um, if there was an argument, if there was a fight here, uh, who's connected to who's, who's the family here, who owns the house, you know, who's, uh, you know, what's the history of the house, you know, where's their ties? I need to know all that. So why would in any God-given time, place, planet, or even sensible, childish mindset as a three-year-old who got their lollipop stolen from them, why Why? would I say or why would anybody tell me that there was only five or six people in this house when there was 120 people or 150? I'm not going to be satisfied with them telling me that there were, well, here we go, three or five people in this house when there was a murder. I want to know everyone that was here. I am going to need to do the background and check every last person. Every 150 people need to be accountable so I know the full story so that I can come up with a true accuracy and get the uh, get the uh, get the get the ball moving. 
Okay. And be assured that way nobody is left out. So they'd be missing. Whenever you hold information back, that means you're holding back information. And that's considered to be illegal as well. You're wrong for holding back information. And when you're not trying to, and if it's evidence as well, that there are 150 people and you don't want to say anything about it. And you got evidence that there was 150 people there. Okay. Now you are, you are tampering with evidence. Now you are an accomplice to whatever happened in that place because now you are, you are, uh, what do you call that? Interrupting investigation and halting it back and making things worse than what it can be. So why would you say, and that destroyed her as well. I'll put that in different words, but he said it just like that, probably even better than myself. Okay. Why would you say, okay. <laughs> and another, wait a minute. That's what, that's another reason why I don't talk to women. That's another reason why I tell you that I'm at zero tolerance. I let him do that nonsense because after the first one talking about flood the world, I would have walked away and left her wherever she was. I don't have time to be, I don't have time to deal with stupid. I really don't. I'm at zero tolerance with stupid. I'll look at you like what you are. I'll walk away. I can give it. I just, I wouldn't give you two rats tails and a dog tongue or a response. Okay. But here you go. Why would you say that it doesn't matter that there could be a hundred other people there with Noah when the story is just talking about Noah and his family? As if the other people would not have an effect. Other people would not matter. As if the other people that were there around Noah is irrelevant to the story. Because if you knew that there were other people in the story, that there is 150 other people around there, wouldn't they be just as significant and as Noah, as his family? Why would you only pinpoint Noah and his family unless you were doing what? Unless you're doing what? Telling a story that doesn't exist. Because you, if you lied to me, I'm the investigator. I need to know that there was 150 people in his house. And you only tell me there was three or five people in his house. You only told me a story. You lied to me. You lied to me. So therefore, I'm going to find a way to, uh, I'm going to find a way to prosecute you for lying to me. Because you should have told me everybody that was here and you knew that there was. Do you understand? So that means you told me a story. So the fact that you say, well, only Noah and his family was here, but, uh, well, there was probably some other people around there. But why, then why are you listening to the story? It's a story then. If you know or think, obviously all you can do is think. Well, they don't think actually. They just assume because you wasn't there and you can only go by the indoctrination, which is gossip, not gospel. Okay. That more people was there. Why would you even concern yourself with that? Because that tells you it's a story. It tells you it's made for children, not adults. Right? Because an adult, an adult mature individual would say, wait a minute, where is the other people then? Why would it be just Noah and his uh, so-called art? <laughs> really? How? You afraid that if you knew that there was 150 other people there? That it will interrupt your story. It's going to interrupt your fantasy world. It's going to interrupt you being in a comfort zone thinking that, oh, it's all about faith, perseverance, and promise. You're going to have faith, perseverance, and promise in a lie, in a story, really? Okay, y'all y'all don't get it. So I'm going to have faith, perseverance, and promise, and I'm the investigator by the, the fact that you lied to me that there are three to five people here in this house that a murder was committed in. When I... It's not faith. Well, you could say it's faith because it's, a, it's almost like hoping in something that don't exist. Faith is the substance. No, faith is the evidence and the substance of the things hoped for and the things not seen. Nonsense. Don't you even try to come over here and correct me because I hate to correct scripture anyway. It don't matter to me. Okay, it's still the same doggone mindless thing. All right, the perseverance. How come? How can I pre? How can I move forward and have perseverance when I only know that when you only told me there's three to five people here? And how is it going to be promised when there's only three to five people here? Y use your thinking cap. There's no nowhere near a promise there. It will be a promise when I get the whole story. You haven't got the whole story. You got the whole indoctrination. I mean, well, scenario, it's a story when you only get half of the information. It's a story. It's a lie. Okay. So that pretty much destroyed that conversation with that person. So I took it from here. 
after he gave me the uh, baton and told me to run with it, I decided to put this into context and to bring it to this academy of wild men because some people are sitting back like, wow, man, people are. <laughs> yeah, they are. OK, they are truthfully. But check this out. I'm not going to talk about you. We don't have to be in, we don't have to get into a debate and uh, we don't have to take this serious. Actually, you don't have to. Because I'm going to tell you something that uh, should probably help you if it don't. Well, you know, just go somewhere else. Be gone and be done with it. OK, I'm going to tell you about a thing that you probably don't know about. It's called culture. You know what that is? Culture and uh, culture with culture comes religion. That's the number one thing with culture comes religion. And I'm going to highlight that in my next audio, not in this one. With culture comes religion. Religion comes culture. With culture comes religion. You got a different culture, they have their own religion. <laughs> Duh. Some, some, there are some cultures who jump on other people's religion because they jumped out of their culture. Ooh, too bad. But not only is that important, but you got to remember this. We have several cultures that are very known. You got your Indians, you got your Asians, you have your uh, Mexicans. Okay, there are black people. There's Africans. There's white people. There's Italian, Irish, Russia. You know, you can say all of them are just Caucasian people. You can't say that. You can say all black people are just black people, which is fine if you want to say that as well. But it does not escape the fact that they are all different people in different genetics, different, different skin tone. Different hair follicles, different hair color, different eye color, different lifestyle, Chinese versus an American person, two different people altogether. Eyes different, hair is different. You know, some of them tall, some of them short. They eat differently. They have a different genetic pattern all together. OK, all together. So you have reality in your face that you can you can say out of camaraderie that that's my brother or my sister. That's fine. You can say that. But when you look at the genetics under a microscope, you are two different people altogether. You got different sensitivity levels where they can only eat certain things and you can only eat certain things. Now, you may be able to go completely back into science if you really want to uh, get geeky with this. And I could. I just don't want to go there. OK. And talk about how you can splice genetics, how you can do genetic manipulation. OK, how time will change genetics, how you can raise you can be raised up in a different country or town with a different mother, but can be the same gene. But however, turn out to be something totally different. OK, but then you have traces of that other genetic or gene within your gene pool, but you're not a part of it, such as white, black, Mexican, Chinese, so forth and so on, which makes a lot of sense. And it could be possible. OK, but we are too far distinct from each other, like from what do you call that? As far as east, no, as far as right is distant from left. If you put your hands across, like the cross itself, and you, you, uh, you open up your hands and your arms, and you try to bring them together, it's going to be probably never, that they'll never come together. Okay, it will be never. Or you could say, it will be the circumference of the earth. Okay, from one, from one arm or hand extended to the left arm, Whichever one it is, it's going to take some while before it comes back to that part. Whereas it's that far away from the truth that you are not from Noah, that no one. We're not a family of Noah. One culture is not whatever culture Noah was. That means that's who we are all. That, that means that's who we are. That means that means that we are all whatever the culture Noah and his family was, period. That means we were all there at that time. That means we all migrated at that time. And you will say, well, we all separated and we went to different towns, different places, and we start spreading across the earth. So you are saying that here's the here's the illogical stupidity behind this. That all life started right there when Noah uh, docked his so-called boat on whatever land and it began there as soon as they hit the land. And then all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, uh, you know, the, the prosperity of the population begin to grow there. And then they spread out to different places like Europe. You know, you got the Eastern world and you got Africa, right? <laughs> you got, then you got, uh, you know, far in the future, you got the islands that started to break away and start to make their own landmass. So 
So what are we preaching then? Think about, no, slow down. What are we preaching? Then why aren't we not? Well, check this out. Why isn't even the Christians themselves are the so-called theology? Oh, I'm a Jesuit. How come the so-called uh, geniuses, which they call themselves, because I would never call them a genius, they're far from it, far from it, uh, isn't starting their Bible point right there? Why don't you just start right there and eliminate everything else? Because that's the beginning of mankind again, right? That's the flood. Everybody. No, 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 no. Shut your mouth. Everybody died, right? Everybody is gone except Noah. So why isn't that everything is cut out and start right there all over again? You know, eliminate the, uh, you know, eliminate the Genesis. Genesis back to the, in the beginning was God and the word was God. And the word is God. You know, moron is God. You know, be, I'm a moron too. You know, well, you know, er, erase all that. Erase it. Okay. And start right there. Is that too hard? Is that too hard to do? It's too hard to do because what will happen is you get a whole lot of people on it. Oh, more you out of your mind, Morphe. You should talk, talk, talk. I don't think you're talking, man. It's still, you, 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 man. You, 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 the devil, man. What are you talking about? These people, man. This is, do, 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 do. Oh, you, you don't read your Bible, man. You know, in King James Version, it said this. As if that's going to make it different. You know, faith actually means this. This is what faith means. No, no, you're reading it wrong. Actually, Noah's art was this, you know, in the translate, in the Hebrew text, <laughs> in the Jewish text, it says, it says this. But you, and you still run it, you know how, have you ever seen a dog that runs around in a circle try to bite his tail? It's the funniest thing to see. It's the funniest thing to see. You know, especially, there's, I used to have some cats, right? And it was fun. I would purposely put a piece of tape on my cat's tail, not enough to pull hair out. Just, just gently put a piece of tape on their tail, and it's the funniest thing ever. You know, if I ever, you know, if I drink like a glass of wine or something like that, get real tipsy. I'm feeling real tipsy, and I'm laughing, just joking, right? And put a tape, piece of tape, on a cat's tail. It's the funniest thing ever. I'm sitting, there, I'm die laugh, falling out of the chair. I'm having a really good time, right? That's what this is like because I've already explained everything that you need to know. I already, I already told you. Everything that you're saying, oh, you're wrong. You know, this, this, you know, this you know, different translations. I already told you that when you are reading a book or studying from someone else's perception, they are obligated to keep their lie in such a fix where they're going to give you five or six different translations at one time because you didn't write it. You didn't write it, nor was you there to prove it. So therefore, you allow yourself to be deceived. So of course you're gonna get on here and say, well, you know, in the you know, in the tip top uh, uh translation, you know, in the hypocrypha it says, you know, in this book it says, you know, um, you know, my priest said this. But, oh, yeah, um, yeah, they all said, what did you say? You can't say it because you wasn't there. Too bad. <laughs> okay, too, uh, the only thing I'm reading from is the same I'm reading the same books that you're reading from, the same translation. I'm reading your translation. I'm throwing this stuff back at you because it's not at home. I didn't write the Bible, so I'm not going by it. I didn't write it. I don't know what happened during that time, so I'm not benching anything on it, nor am I going to put my life and death on anything that's fictitious and unreal because I didn't do it. But you know what? On my book, I can because you know what? It's my signature because I was there. Okay, in my life, I can. On my car, I can because it's my car. I worked on it. So if something's wrong underneath the hood, I know about it, right? Nobody can't tell me something else because it's mine unless they driven it and broke it themselves and come, oh, you know, it's really good. Yeah, everything is fine. There's missing bolts and stuff like that. That'd be a different story. But if you, you own your own house, you own your own soul, you own your own mind, you own your own common sense that most people don't have anymore anyway. You own your own path. Nobody can truly lie to you. They can't lie to you because you've been there. You've done that. It's your signature on it. It's your own genetic pattern. So I'm going to sit up here and say, well, you know, there's five different translations to this. Yeah. And they, and none of them you written. And if you wrote one of them, trust me, you pilfered it from another translation of someone else because otherwise you wouldn't know the story. We all know the story because it was pilfered from somebody else. We didn't make the story of Noah and his funny looking art. So that should destroy your fantasy and your fanatic mindset right there. But we so far and we are thinking is so far and few in between where well, we can't put the piece together and we're arguing about something that we didn't even own or create ourselves, which is funny. It's real funny. Now you would think that I'm trying to destroy hope. 
<laughs> funny hope. No, that's that's the first thing in some people. You know, you're trying. You know, the church is based on hope. Morpheus. So why are you? You know, why are you? You know, we get, people got to have something to look forward to. You know, you're destroying this this mythical idea. Well, you know, what's your objective with it? You trying to just no, 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 no. You just said it. You just said it. And my partner was telling uh, that his uh, friend client the same thing. You're right. We will totally agree with you. As a matter of fact, I will give you a pat on the back and I'll give you a, hit, a, fi- a high five. Let me give you a high five on this. You just said it. It is for hope. It is only for hope. Not for anything else. It is to give you something to hope for when you are supposed to at least hope in yourself. That's why it was made. It was made for the hopeless. You don't believe. Here we go. Here's the belief thing. You don't believe in yourself. You're going to need hope. You don't have any confidence in yourself. You're going to need hope. Because some people, they live hopeless lifestyles. They think hopelessly. You know, they they provide for their families hopelessly. They're in a hopeless situation. Hope doesn't mean that it is right, wrong, true or untrue. It just means it is hopeful. That means it's something that you are hoping for to happen. That doesn't mean that it exists in the realm and as if you are whatever that you are perceiving it to exist about. It's just giving you something to hold on to. To keep you from losing your mind, to keep you under a certain control, to give you something that you can give to yourself because you don't give yourself any hopeful outlet. So you need something else to give you hope. So that's why you have these confessions because you're hopeless. You got to confess. You're sitting in this confession booth and you got to talk to the priest. You know, I, yeah, I did sin. I did this and that. I'm like, why are you talking to him? You can't talk to yourself. You can't sit at home and, and reprimand yourself for doing wrong. All right. You need somebody else to tell you or to correct you. You need the uh, what do you call that? The rosary around your neck in order for you to feel like you're doing right in life. <laughs> like, no, 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 slow, no, no. Shut your mouth. Listen, no, don't get out of control. Hold on. Hold on. No, no. Think about it. You should no, You an adult. Grow up. You an adult. Check this out. You are an adult. Think about it. You need jewelry jewelry items across your flesh in order for you to be perceived as a good person no i just read because i just represent it you know i i got this from my mom i'd be like why don't she just give me some money not a cross a crucifix really something that somebody passed away on why not wear something that represents life not death Uh uh-oh You say, well, it does represent life. In whose perception? Yours? Because last time I checked, a lot of people had to go through that same situation as he did. <laughs> okay? But this one person is more special than everybody else who suffered. What a joke. What about the thieves that were next to him? What about them? They're irrelevant. Remember, they asked for a seat at his table. I guess they got their seat, didn't they? We don't think like that. That's too real. It's too hard. I'm going to get off of this. You know, this is Lee C. a.k.a. Morpheus. The whole gumption, the whole reason for this audio, should you... Uh, be flipping in your seat and compl- become completely complacent in your thoughts of being an adult instead of just being one. It's simply this. The way that we think is what's destroying us today because we are still thinking by myth. We still want to be in a comfortable zone and we're still looking for hope in the outer things and not having hope in ourselves because we're not going by what we write in our own signature of our life. We're basing on our our our, our our correlations with someone else's idea of what we should be and how we are supposed to live our life. There is indeed some decent 
regiments and rules that were in the Bible that made sense, that helped humanity. Because at that time, it was about people who knew themselves and which today we do not. The only thing that makes it seem to be real is because at that time, people wrote things that was essential to how we are to develop our neighborhoods, our towns, our social structures and our relationships between men and women. But year to year, instead of us advancing, we started to de-evolve. But the Bible has still remained the same. Not God as what you're thinking, the Bible, the word. When you write a book and you use that as a standard, okay, and you go off and you break those standards, you start to be stupid and do silly things in your life. Then when you go back and you read that same book that you have written based on you being your best self, you will feel ashamed. You will feel bad. And that, that book will seem like a fresh mushroom, fresh from the garden. But it hasn't changed. It just gives you a reality check. That doesn't mean that it makes it real or reality. Or, oh, this is God gifted gift. It is amazing. It set me on the right track. No, you was off the track. And those specific rules and regulations are things that are in the general average human being because we are not what we used to be anymore. We just lost our place. Whereas you shouldn't need it and it should not need to be as a rule of thumb or a, 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 a moral manuscript. You just have we have become immoral. We have become lackadaisical in our behaviors and we have become an abomination to our own country and our own kind. That's the problem. So therefore, the book becomes a hope to those who are usually hopeless in themselves. They are a hopeless species and a hopeless kind. So therefore, it becomes something to them of a new thing or a correction device. That's the reality of it, because if you're going to do right, you don't need anything to tell you what you need to do or what you do not need to do, because it's already within you to do. And if you're not teaching it like you teach the ABCs and one, two, threes and and, you know, water is water and fire is fire. OK, sometimes you're just not teaching it. So therefore, what do children and, and adults do? They grow up mindlessly. Because we don't teach our morals, we don't teach what humanity is all about because we don't even know what it's about anymore. We're all confused. We don't even know who we are. We don't even know where we are in existence. But yet we want to sit here and say, this book is true. No, it's just that you aren't true and you don't know your own standards or standings. And it becomes evident in the way that we live our lives as a country or as a people. And then we want to blame it on God or a devil concept when it is us at the end of the day and it's our failure to think. When by this time, if you've been teaching like you were supposed to and became good role models at, as mom and dad, you are already building morality in your family or in your home. Where you don't need a pull pip, the pull pimp, pimp, can't even say the words all together, pull pit pimp to tell you what to do and how to live your life and what they think God is and what they expect for you to think God is in return. You'll begin to think for yourself, but because we don't teach anything but an indoctrination and religion, okay, we fall out of reality. That's what this is all about. And it was a good breakdown of very details and simple kindergarten ideas as you've been in Sunday school class reading and never question. Because how can a child question something that's given to them when the child don't even know themselves? And still today, it plays out just the same. We still don't know ourselves and we still don't question it. So we never grew up. We still in Noah's Ark. This is Leon C, a.k.a. Morpheus. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> I know you mad. Too bad. This is for the evolution of those who are willing to open up their mind. These are for those who are tired of being lied to. Maybe you are comfortable to be lied to and you love living your lie. OK, I'd rather be around people and teach those who are trying to get to a higher plane of existence.